CataractCoach.com. Vitreous prolapse after YAG laser capsulotomy. Now you've got vitreous in the anterior chamber and prolapsing around the optic. What are you going to do in this tough case? This patient is going to need a big rescue. And that's going to be an anterior vitrectomy, but also a posterior vitrectomy. Get all the vitreous out. Make sure the retina is okay. And by the way, it's not. There's a break here. We'll find out. Great video by our guest surgeon, Dr. Pradeep Prasad. He is our host of RetinaRounds.com, our sister channel. Check it out. He's going to have a new video coming up every day starting on March 1. And remember, yesterday's podcast was the Cataract Coach Podcast with episode number 100, Dr. Pradeep Prasad. And we learned so much about this amazing surgeon. And he's going to help us all become better at the retina and posterior segment pathologies. Check it out. Welcome to RetinaRounds.com. Today we're going to be looking at a case of vitreous prolapse after YAG capsulotomy. Pretty rare complication, but when vitreous migrates into the anterior chamber, it can put patients at higher risk for cystoid macular edema, retinal tears, and retinal detachments. Uh, here you can see the patient. You can appreciate the vitreous that's in the anterior chamber. If you look a little bit deeper there, you can also see some remnants of the patient's posterior capsule floating there in the anterior vitreous. This is causing the patient a lot of symptomatic floaters, and so we're going to approach this patient's problem with a, with a posterior approach, doing a standard three-port parse plane of vitrectomy. This is a 25-gauge setup. You can see the light pipe and cutter being introduced here through those trocars. And we're going to start with a core vitrectomy. You can see that those capsule remnants are being removed right away. Uh, now, you may be wondering, well, if this patient didn't have any capsule remnants, could it just an anterior vitrectomy be done? And, and really, I think there's a lot of benefit to doing a, a complete parse plane of vitrectomy for these patients. One, you're going to really decrease the likelihood that additional vitreous is going to migrate into the anterior chamber later on. And two, doing a thorough vitrectomy is really going to decrease that risk of a retinal tear or detachment for the patient long term. So here you can see uh, we're just double checking, making sure that the PVD has been uh, induced. And then we're going to move on to our shaving of the peripheral vitreous. You can see here the assistant is depressing the scleral surface and we're shaving the vitreous base. This too is going to decrease the chance that this patient's going to develop a retinal tear or detachment later on. It's also going to allow us to identify any peripheral retinal pathology that may, be treat may need to be treated. In this particular patient's eye, we actually did identify a very small tear, no subretinal fluid. So we went ahead and treated that with laser photocoagulation. You can see that being administered here. So once that's done, we're going to have to still tackle the vitreous that's in the anterior chamber. First, let's just make sure that there's no residual uh, anterior vitreous just behind the, post, behind the uh, intraocular lens. And then we're going to do the anterior vitrectomy. So uh, the vitreous cutter could just be introduced into the anterior chamber and a vitrectomy performed, but we really want to make sure that the AC is stable. So we're going to introduce an anterior chamber maintainer. That AC stability is important to make sure you don't damage the endothelium. Also to make sure that the iris doesn't start to jump into the vitreous cutter port. Uh, and so here the AC maintainer is actually being attached to the same infusion system that we're using in the pars plana. So you can see here the infusion line. This is going to a three-way stopcock. One part of that stopcock is going to be going to the infusion that's going uh, into the pars plana for, uh, through the trocar for the posterior vitrectomy. And then the other side of that stopcock is where the anterior chamber line is located. Um, you're going to be able to see here what that setup looks like. So you see both lines going into the eye. So when we're ready to do the anterior vitrectomy, we just turn that stopcock and we get flow into the anterior chamber. So here the, uh, the same cutter, the same vitreous cutter that we used in the posterior segment we're using in the anterior chamber. You can see here there's not a lot of movement of the vitreous cutter. We're not using it like a wand. We don't want it to be, we don't want to be moving very aggressively in the, in, in the anterior chamber. Again, we want to make sure not to engage any iris. Uh, and when we see that the vitreous is no longer coming to the tip of the cutter, that's when we can start to twist the tip to engage that vitreous that's there, twisting anywhere from 45 to 90 degrees to engage any residual vitreous, just going all the way around 360 degrees, making sure that all that vitreous uh, is removed. Once that's done, we just want to do a double check make sure that, uh, that, that we haven't missed any, any, any vitreous. And so we're gonna just uh, put a little dilute triamcinolone in the anterior chamber. Highly recommend diluting the triamcinolone. You don't want any heavy clumps of, of triamcinolone there to obscure your view. Just need a light dusting of any residual vitreous that may be there. And actually you can see that there is just a little bit of vitreous 
that's still here. So we're going to clean that up. Just a couple of a couple of other spots, um, just to make sure that things are as cleaned as thoroughly as possible. Next step, we're going to put some myocol in the anterior chamber, constrict that pupil. If we see any peaking, get very suspicious that uh, there may still be some vitreous there. We can see that pupil looks nice and round, um, and so that really completes the case. We're going to close up our sclerotomies using 6O plain gut suture, uh, and then we're going to inject a little bit of antibiotic and some steroid. Uh, this patient did really well and she was very happy with her outcome. If you like this video, please visit us at retinarounds.com. There you can sign up for our email list. We'll send you an email every time a new video is posted. You can also use our website to upload your videos. So if you have an interesting tip or trick or an interesting case that you want to share, visit us at retinarounds.com. Thanks so much for watching.